Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the official podcast. I know usually you look at the four of us as just this beacon of joy and enthusiasm, but today with a heavy heart, we have to announce that Jackson has quit the podcast. Honestly, I'm surprised he lasted as long as he did. We all saw this day coming. It's not easy to survive in this Thunderdome, and we respect Jackson's decision to move on. Uh, I thought it'd be in his honor and a tribute to him to make this episode our favorite memories of Jackson. So, I don't. Andrew, if you'll kick off the honor. Mm. Um, my favorite was when he quit the podcast that one time. Mm. It really, really upped the quality of the show, and I don't know, it made our lives better. Like, re- do you remember when we had that exclusivity clause in the contract? Jackson quit. And then he tried to join a different show, but then we got to sue him and we made millions. That was pretty great. Mm. Which know. do you think is harder, the harder pill to swallow, Jackson's departure or Alex's? Because right oh. now I'm kind of torn. Uh, that's a good point. I mean, I, I cried for like days over Alex. Jackson, I think I just kind of thought about it for like 10 minutes. How about you guys? I think he'll be back. I think he's just having a little episode because we just kept making fun of him for like two episodes in a row. <laughs> it, I, I don't know. I just I, I feel like the whole thing has been blown a little out of proportion. The fans got yeah. the wrong idea. I've been getting a lot of messages about this. Apparently, he has been just having these weird meltdowns on Snapchat about us. I reread yeah. our chat conversations too. like we just that argument we had. It was not that bad. I, I really don't know. I just don't think we needed to bring his mother into it. I think we may have crossed the line. Lisa's always been such a sweet woman. The porn she sends him's always been great. Always rescuing animals, doing good for her community. Jackson, on the other hand, I mean, what did he do? Talked on a microphone. That was it. (laughs) He was so angry that I implied he might be secret, like hiding a disability from us. (laughs) It's like I'm scrolling up in our chat again. He says like, Oh, this chat was just amazing. He's being sarcastic with us. When I'm in the call with you guys, we're all laughing and having fun. But when I leave, you all just start saying that I'm actually retarded and actually stupid. And then it's incredibly boring until I rejoin the call. I said, that's not true, dude. And he says, how? I like it when you guys are joking, but I don't like it when you say, wow, he really is stupid. He has no (laughs) self-awareness. (laughs) <laughs> the whole ep- episode, Andrew constantly points out that he seriously doesn't like me and that he doesn't want to talk to me. <laughs> no. I gotta speak my mind. Yeah, I don't know. I just, he got unreasonably offended. I just figured, you know, he likes Legos, he likes Star Wars, he might, you know, he has so much s- s- uh, low self-esteem, it might be a real thing that he would hide from us if he did have autism. <laughs> Thanks Which isn't something we Kaya. judge him for. Yeah, is that, is that Jackson doing that or the autism doing that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Are they one and the same? <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be right, though, Kai. I, I, th- I have on good conscious a, a strong inkling he might come back. <laughs> yeah, Just maybe something, maybe even by the end of next week me. he might be rejoining us. Who knows? Yeah, I there's really know. no telling. Yeah. Okay. I, well, I know I'll I'll take a stand on this one. I'll 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 just say it. I want him back. I really do. I, I miss yeah, come, him already. Come home, Jackson. If he apologizes, Jackson. If you're Hashtag, out there watching, go go I ahead. I stand with Jackson. I stand with Jackson. That's right, Jackson. If you're out there watching right now, I I just need you to know that we care about you and we love you and we hope you make it home safe and God knows where you've gone, but please come back to us, please. Yeah. We can't do this show without you. We're falling the fuck apart. I almost called Charlie Chuckles. That's not funny at all. Ugh. Do you guys remember that time we... Do you remember Mm. when we brought iDubs on the podcast and Jackson, like a giddy schoolgirl, got so excited? I I miss Jackson already, guys. It was such a great episode, too. We got to have iDubs. Like, every week we have to cut out him repeatedly bringing up Hitler's book again. (laughs) That's oh, true. This is right. going to be a. Yeah. Th- he's always been a bit of a burden on our editor with all of his like yeah. fucking mind comp tangents and shit. I'm looking at the fucking topic list here today, and mind comp is surprisingly absent. Maybe this will be a nice change of pace. <laughs> yeah. They got, wow. No Lego or Star Wars either. Huh. Maybe maybe this oh, will be okay. 
Let's be honest, Lego and Star Wars has been the glue that's held the podcast together for like three <laughs> weeks now. Hey, we gave him a chance. That was very polite. That's, you know, I've noticed that fans have noticed that we keep ripping on Jackson. And last week we gave him a shot. We, we told him rip on us for a change. And he and didn't want to. He went too far. He went a little didn't too he far when he called me short. Us. Yeah. <laughs> no, he called yeah. me short. Oh, yeah. Well, take it as a compliment. I don't know. How do you think he got a little nasty? Hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, fuck Jackson. He should stay off the show forever. We don't need him. We can do better without him. Who would we replace him with if he had to? Hmm. Mm. I was thinking we bring Alex back on, but <laughs> he didn't respond. Uh -oh. So maybe that ship is sailed. <laughs> do you think he's washed his hands of us? Uh, I don't know. I, I think <laughs> our Twitter DMs is the one of the most inefficient means of contacting someone on the oh, planet yeah. but you, send a fucking rock and throw it out the window and hope they get it so with the with the whole alex is the fifth host of the podcast thing and the this and that do you think by this point every time you message him he's just like oh fuck i'm so tired of <sighs> doing shit for that podcast <laughs> yeah god damn it <laughs> just a loud sigh <laughs> fuck <laughs> just it doesn't even want to answer you just i know he's gonna ask me about that fucking show yeah he must be getting a lot of memes Hmm. Can't really blame him. Yeah, I agree. I don't know, who who would appropriately be able to replace Jackson in the event he actually quit? I can't really think of anyone like off the top of my head. I actually Some think board. about something similar recently, where it's like if one of us died and we had to permanently replace them, what we would do. It's a good question. Well, what would I you think? What would you do? I I'd freak the fuck out and panic and and probably I don't know. I can't think of anyone who could properly replace the show and keep it be the same style and everything. God, that came out awkward. But I can't think of anyone who I think I could slot in and the show would feel the same. It might it might be as good, but I don't think it would have the same feel to it. Which makes sense, I guess. Yeah, there's just not a whole lot of people like Jackson. I agree. <laughs> oh, Jackson. We could find a Lego YouTuber, I'm sure. There has to be a you few. You know, yeah. I, I, I tried looking up Lego YouTubers. I couldn't find very many. It was actually kind of hard to find, like, a dedicated Lego Star Wars YouTuber. Really? I think Jackson might really be a one-of-a-kind. Wow. The unicorn. Well, there's tons of Star Wars YouTubers. We just have to find one oh, with yeah. an interest in Lego. <laughs> the two don't mix. It's <laughs> polar right. opposites, Andrew. It's never been done before. There is no overlap in those audiences at all. None. Well, there's no overlap with Lego Star Wars and the word cool. That's going to be a rough Ooh. one. I disagree. I've seen some great Lego Star Wars. You wouldn't believe the Star Killer bases I've seen. I think the tipping point for Jackson's absence was when he put, like, photos of his Lego Star Destroyer in our <laughs> chat and none of us replied. <laughs> <laughs> like come on this was cool right and it's just crickets <laughs> that, that was like an actual conversation well not even a conversation but it's something actual in the discord jackson's building like this fifty thousand piece lego star destroyer and it took it took him like it must be like 15 hours of work and he'd send update photos <laughs> but no one in the chat responded i did because he sent them to me but uh, in, in the group chat, no one gave a shit. And then he sent something of Terry Crews building a TIE fighter. And he's like, see, guys, it's pretty cool, right? I always love when, like, nerds use successful people's, you know, little cutesy side hobbies as some sort of a vindication. Like when, oh, look at Henry Cavill. He, he also plays Xbox video games oh, all man. day. Thank no. you for bringing that up. <laughs> I uh, I was doing my thing where I look at like the top posts on Reddit and make fun of them and shit. One of the highest rated posts on our gaming a week ago was just an article about, hey, guys, Henry Cavill plays video games, too. And that was it. That was the entire content of it. That's fucking awesome. I didn't know that. Holy shit. Who just like Henry Cavill. <laughs> yeah, who gives a fuck? Cavill, Cavill. I still don't even know how it's pronounced, but there's like... You just know he just spoke to his PR manager and he said, okay, Henry, if they ask you, you got to be relatable, okay? If they ask you, you tell them you love PlayStation X, uh, PlayStation Pro 4 
you played all of the Witchers, okay? And if you want to be really past. quirky, say you like Mass Effect 2. And Henry's yeah. sitting there like, all right, got it. It's PlayStation Pro Witcher 4 PlayStation Effect. I, I, no, I Henry. mean, even if we go down the route of not being a, a fake personality, like let's say Henry Cavill is a giant gamer and he loves gaming and he plays it all the time and it's all he does in his free time. Who the fuck cares? Like, if the article was Henry Cavill talks <laughs> well, about his acting career or talks about things he has experience in or interesting things, great. But I don't give a shit that Henry Cavill occasionally turns on a PlayStation. How is that an, an article? I decided to look it up because this, yeah, this, this truly was mind blowing to hear this. So I had to fact check it. I see why this is number one on our gaming because he was asked which is better. PS4 or Xbox <laughs> One, and Cavill said, and you get this, get what, this is what yeah. he said, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, kidding. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My God, Cavill said, PC. Oh, wow. PC yeah. Master Race. Wow. The PC Master Race. He's just like wow. us. That really yeah. subverted my expectations. <laughs> I don't know why you'd shit on that, Andrew. That's pretty fucking You're right. Huge. I can't. That deserves an entire article in, article in the top post on I'm gonna our gaming. I'm going to repost that on our gaming right now, actually. You should. You'll get shadow banned. It's great. You should tweet it. Like, society <laughs> looks at gamers like we're all terrible people, but this is our true face. This is peak gamer. Henry Ooh, like Cavill. one of those memes. This is what they think of when they see gamers, and yeah. then it's like Joker. But this <laughs> is what we actually are. <laughs> and it's yeah. Superman. Oh, that'd be perfect. <laughs> yeah. That'd be so the, perfect. Uh, what society thinks I do, and it's the Joker. What my mom thinks I do, and it's Henry Cavill. Yeah. <laughs> Finally got around to seeing the Joker, by the way. Good movie. What do you think? Thank you. I like it. Good movie. Didn't have to be the Joker, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how you can actually take a good character and make it a classy movie. And it turns out, well, it's surprising. You don't even have to give him goofy, you know, Teletubby suits and such. Yeah. yeah. that's. I think I said that on the podcast where if the movie was just called Clown and had nothing to do with the Joker, people would say it's like the greatest movie, one of the greatest movies ever made. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not have that whole fucking controversy of uh, gamers rise up. I'm gonna go to the theater because I want to get shot. Haha, <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that shit was pretty wild. Yeah, what a wacky fuck. time in American history, right? We're in a weird fucking place right now, man. The things that we're afraid of and constantly talking about is kind of goofy when you think about it. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, think I about it. it. Fucking, uh, you have a child right now who's famous for just screaming about climate change. Oh, yeah. God. Greta. Just... Have... Greta. Fuck. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you have a movie that people are afraid of going to because they think they'll actually die. Like, back in the fucking 50s, people were like, that movie's too scary. You'll die in the theater. Now it's, yeah, you'll legitimately fucking die because someone's going to shoot it up. Yeah, so I like joke. God, it's just not the same without Jackson to make fun of and... <laughs> now I feel bad because that's not his whole purpose. But he got really good at it. <laughs> Jackson did. started as so much more. A symbol. <laughs> no, so the thing with people like Jackson is that they have a lot of... So I make a joke, you know, all the shit we said at the beginning about he has low confidence. Like that chat log that I read wasn't real in case anybody was about to get angry and go on to fucking Reddit and seriously get angry at us for making fun of him. I made that shit up, but... I genuinely think people like him have more above average confidence or very low confidence. It's one of the two, and I can't figure it out usually with these people because most people can't take that amount of ripping without getting genuinely pissed off. And Jackson doesn't seem to be genuinely getting pissed off, which is, you know, I like people like that. We love you, Jackson, is what he's saying. Yeah, I hope. I hope Jackson I mean, to be able back. to take that joke week after week and that sort of stuff <laughs> <laughs> you know he just he has never pulled us aside like off the show or anything like that telling us hey guys you know it's actually starting to hurt my feelings for realsies it's never happened he always just takes the fucking joke on the chin comes back the next week and repeats it so yeah thanks jackson what if jackson's secretly depressed and really really just down what would we do we oh, what a fun thought, Andrew. Yes. What yeah. would we do? Well, what would we do? We got to be good friends. We'd have like a Jackson centered episode where instead we talk about like the good things of Star Wars and Lego and that's it. 
I, I like how it's the only personality you can give him. He's depressed because we don't like Star Wars and Legos. Hey, I know a lot about Jackson. Like, uh, he he's likes Australian. Australian. He Ooh. likes dinosaurs. Yeah, that's another big one. Oh, yeah. Oh, get this. Uh, so, yeah, since we're dropping the facade, yeah, Jackson obviously didn't quit. It was just a joke. He just couldn't make it today because he's traveling to America. And uh, in the time he's over here, there's a live action Jurassic World show that I wanted to take him to where people dress up in dinosaur costumes and roam around an arena. I thought that'd make his like fucking life. Ooh. Yeah. He should, you should go to Australia and he'll take you to Urugara, the rock or whatever that spirit is that they worship. Yeah, get like some frozen two shit into the unknown. I get to meet that giant fucking rock. You could hike around it. You could look at it. I don't (laughs) take a take a photo of it so you can remember your time at the rock. (laughs) Ask it to bring some rain. Yeah. Put your hand on it, maybe. I don't know if that's illegal. (laughs) Scrape some dust off. Yeah, get some rock Ooh, dust. Ooh, yeah, a little souvenir. That'd be great. Take a selfie with the rock. <laughs> Vandalize it, just etch into it. Charlie is here. <laughs> yeah, plant an American flag on it. Drop a cheeseburger <laughs> next to it. Claim it for America. <laughs> Open a Starbucks on it. <laughs> that sounds about American. Amen, oh. baby. Looks like Doug is here. D boy, D dog, you there? Did somebody say cheeseburger? <laughs> oh, you've been here for a little bit. I had the cheeseburger summoned oh. you. Yeah, Doug, uh, are you recording yourself? I am. Okay, dokie. Thanks for filling in last minute. Hey, I so what did I miss? Jackson uh, quit the show. What do you yeah, think of Jackson that? Jackson quit. Oh, that's too bad. I liked him. Yeah, we all did. <laughs> we were just going over our favorite memories of him. What's your favorite memory of Jackson, Doug? Uh, when he said he liked me. That was my favorite, too. That's <laughs> the one I said. Yeah, I like when he said he liked Doug, too. It was great. Also. Yeah, it was like bridging that. two worlds, like a generational gap. I feel like you're retconning Jackson's lore here. I don't remember that. It's putting words in his mouth. I remember when Jackson pulled me aside and said he was, I was his favorite fat man. Oh, God, I love that guy. <laughs> Well, that sounds like something I had said. How did you guys' this Christmas go, Doug? How how did yours go? Uh, mine was about as uneventful as you could get. Just me and my wife sitting at the house watching the balls, playing with the dogs. That sucks, man. That sounds yeah. boring. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's fucking miserable. Were your kids not there? No, no. My kids are all grown and moved out. They went. Uh, uh they live in other parts of the country. So they did their own Christmases. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. Was that your decision? Like, did, was your wife trying to do something and you said no? Or did you guys just mutually decide not to do anything? Yeah, we, we just mutually decided not to do anything. Um, Christmas Eve, we went and went to a casino and played mm. some games for a bit. It really didn't do anything. Went and bought her a dog yesterday. Another fucking dog. We got four dogs here now. Jesus, Jesus. Christ. Wow. Yeah, what the hell? I remember you just picked up a puppy like a couple of months ago. Yeah. That was a that was a little baby pit bull. Uh, he's not a little baby anymore. Yesterday we picked up a uh, teacup chihuahua. So oh, that's a good it, mix. Where how do the fuck you draw do these the dogs line? even get along? Oh, they, I don't know. They do. Um, so our our oldest dog is a a pretty good sized pit, and he only doesn't like large female dogs who he thinks is trying to encroach on his territory. Does it uh, have to be female? Yeah, yeah, he doesn't have a problem with other male dogs. Uh, he's probably gay or something. Fuck, I don't know. Uh, yeah, but, that's really weird. Huh. But, uh, um, yeah, if it's a dog that's smaller than him, then he's very, very lovey and protective. Aw. Oh, but then, cute. so, where are you ever going to draw the line with your wife hoarding dogs? Where is this going to stop? Oh, I, I don't mind. Uh, it's not too much of a problem right now. Okay, but but still, how many dogs are too much for you? Four. <laughs> <laughs> but you cave. That's adorable. No, it's, it's hard a- to say. It's really hard to say no to a dog. I I can see yeah. where Doug's coming from. Once you see a dog and it needs a home, it's like fuck. Well, I got to make room now. Yeah. yeah, that 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 first pit that we got um, here recently, anyway. Um, he was a rescue 
So he was tied up outside for all of two years on like a two foot chain. Um, so we were really worried about, you know, bringing him into the house and how he was going to act. But yeah, he's, uh, he's turned around quite well. Very loving. That's fun. That's nice. That's a nice That's Christmas story kid. right there. Yeah. Saving animals. What about you, Andrew? What did you do for Christmas? I went to my aunt's house where uh, I've been going for the last, oh, God, I don't know, 20 years every Christmas. You guys have, like, a tradition? Yeah, we, we get a lot of the family together over there. Just that's where we do Christmas. Mm. It was nice. It's not really a exciting tale, but it's just, you know, my whole family just gets together, and we do Christmas there and watch Die Hard, and that's about it. Oh, that yeah, is a good movie. Real- some real boring Christmases out here, goddamn. I <laughs> drove 18 hours up to Pennsylvania for my Christmas. Ooh. Why? Yeah. Was that That's... trip uh, any modicum of fun at all? Uh, mm, kind of. There's this there's this really podunk weird amusement park that you pass going through South Carolina, and we pass it every time we go up, called Fort Pedro's South of the Border. And this year, I wanted to make a stop to check it out because it looks dilapidated and, like, hardly held together. There's, like, at least 100 signs for 50 miles all, like, promoting it. So I wanted to see it firsthand, and I thought it'd be totally abandoned, but it wasn't, unfortunately. But we went in, and it's these giant fiberglass statues of a man named Pedro with a giant sombrero, and he's got, like, these weird animals scattered around the the fucking campgrounds. There's this motel that probably has, on any given day, a couple murders, muggings, the... There's an amusement park section with these rides that are totally shut down. It literally looks like Modern Warfare's um, carnival map. You know, the one 50,000 people used to live here, now it's a ghost town. That's what Fort Pedro looks like. You know, that's based off a real place, right? Yeah, it's probably based off Fort Pedro. (laughs) (laughs) So you just checked it out and then left? There wasn't anything to do there? No, I, I wanted it to be empty, but it, there was, it wasn't because of all the Christmas travelers that got stranded because of bad weather. Oh, so wow. I didn't really want to explore with all those people there. There was dogs walking around that clearly had mange and shit, and I didn't want my dogs around that. And there was just, it, it looked absolutely disgusting, the people there. So we didn't stop for any length of time, but it was definitely cool to see the area for at least a, a single fragment of a second. That's about the only fun the drive had. Did you see the Sombrero Tower? Yeah, so the Sombrero okay. Watchtower was definitely there. It's really high. Yeah, didn't go on it or anything though. That's the I only ask because on Google Maps they took the time to mark that specifically as a landmark. Mm-hmm. Shit's wild. Yeah. I, I definitely want to go back when it's empty. The uh, <laughs> Sombrero Watchtower, Andrew, is that is that just one of those towers where you climb up to the top for a good view? It's actually uh, an elevator. Oh, it's like Doctor Doom's tower, but Pedro style. Interesting. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Doug. Remember Dr. Will- Doom's Tower? You know, that's uh, I must have missed that episode of that show, whatever that was. Um, <laughs> what the fuck do you mean? It's, it's, it's You've never Disney seen World. Dr. Doom's do Tower? Mean? It's a great show. Uh, so the mean? reason the reason Disney? why the reason why I asked was when we were on the when we evacuated from North Carolina from the hurricane, we ended up in Virginia and we were on the side of a mountain just kind of bored waiting to be able to go back home. And we ended up in this shitty town. It was, I bet there was maybe 4,000 people in the town, but their, their big uh, uh, attraction there was a lookout tower on the side of the mountain. So me and my daughter went, attempted to go up it. And I, I got about halfway before I pussied out. But, you know, looking at the footings of this tower, the bolts and everything were coming out of the concrete. I think it was about 200 feet up in the air. Um, <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I so I got about halfway up, and and as we're walking up, I'm, I'm I keep asking my daughter like, so have you had enough yet? You ready to go back? No, let's go up some more. All right, uh, <laughs> have you had enough yet? You ready to go back? <laughs> and, and then and then we finally got like like I said about halfway up, and I said so so what do you think? You want to keep going? She goes, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. We should probably go back down. <laughs> Jesus. Where was that? That wasn't Fort Pedro's, was it? Couldn't have been. No, I, it, like I said, it was in Virginia. I don't. I don't oh, gotcha. Was this when your um, house got swept away, or was yeah. this a difference? Okay. Mm. Uh, uh, I, so the funny thing is, is my daughter is very, very—I guess you'd say—left-leaning in her political views. 
And we walked into the gift shop there at that tower. And right when you walk in, there was this uh, T-shirt up on a on the wall for sale. And it was a big Confederate flag that said, never apologize for being right. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> That's some super Virginia shit. Um, we passed through that area on the way back down. There's this giant fucking Confederate flag planted almost in the goddamn interstate. It is wild, that area. You, you didn't happen to pass through Kentucky, did you? No. Oh, not. man, you missed the Colonel Sanders watching over his country. Yeah, I didn't see that, unfortunately. Yeah. Just these fucking Confederate flags planted across the interstate, like right next to it. Did you see uh, the zombie children on the way? What do you mean, the zombie there's, children? There's this one billboard. Like, there's obviously a ton of religious billboards on the way, you know, through the southern states of, like, anti-abortion and repent or you'll die in this and that. There's this one, though, that's kind of, like, infamous. It's about the rapture coming. And it's like, if you don't believe in Jesus, you're going to go to hell and die and burn. And, like, the top half of the billboard is, like, heaven and, like, Jesus floating around. But then the bottom half is a depiction of hell. And it's two children very realistically photoshopped to look dead <laughs> and fucking like flesh is melting off of them. And it's disturbing as shit. Can't say I saw that, unfortunately. What a shame. That's I awesome. never forgot it. Yeah. So uh, did you get her the T-shirt, Doug, or yourself? No, she she wasn't even interested in, in being inside that, that gift shop. Uh -huh. Um so what was funny was it was later that day we were in a, a Walmart there in, in Virginia and she looks at me and she goes, dad, how, how come all these people look the same? They, they all had the same facial features. And then it dawned on her that they probably don't go outside of that circle to breed. <laughs> oh, the reality check. <laughs> oh man. So did you hear uh oh, go ahead, Kyle. No, you go ahead. Uh, so I was going to ask Charlie, since he just did the trip, did you hear a lot of interesting accents? A little. No. I mean, it's not like we yeah. stopped to mingle with the locals. Like, I, I fucking, I, I hid from people. I, area, like, that trip is scary, and the people around there <laughs> is scary. Absolutely not. I, I only ask because uh, when Juliana and I were moving her back down from Chicago, we stopped at a fucking Culver's, which is a fast food restaurant, for those of you who don't have it, in... Um, I want to say Georgia, but I don't remember exactly, but it was just interesting because every single person around us had a Southern accent. So technically we became the people with the accent. No, oh, I just think cute, that's though. cute. Yeah. I wonder if something like that happened to you. No. Culture shock. No, not at all. I went to New York though, around Christmas. That was kind of a, a shock. It's just kind of a weird little city full of really bad drivers and a lot of activity. <laughs> Where we're at, New York? The actual city. Like just oh. Times Square area and the shit around there. Yeah, we, we last Thanksgiving we went to the Macy's parade. And mm. that oh, was a man. fucking nightmare. I've heard that that's disturbingly jam packed and hard to enjoy. Yeah, the, uh, again, I didn't really have a whole lot of say in the trip. It was we're going to New York and you're gonna have fun. All right. Let's do that then. <laughs> I feel like you're the pushover in the family. Yeah, this really feels like your wife's wearing the pants around here. Well, no shit. There, there's a reason why I'm such an asshole when I'm in this room by myself. <laughs> yeah, you always take it out on me. He's, he's going to start whispering in the mic. Sorry, guys. Wife's home. I got to be quiet. Yeah. She also told me to apologize to you guys. <laughs> have, you, uh, have you done uh, Times Square for the ball drop, the New Year's Eve? Either of you? No, I would never do that. That's like a million people bathing in yeah. filth. Yeah, it actually yeah. is. I, I was reading something recently that some people, to get a good spot, like close to the cameras or close to the ball, they wait for so long that they actually have to wear diapers because they can't get out of the crowd to go to the bathroom. Yeah, I, I think they quit doing uh, porta potties and all that. Yeah. And of course, the businesses there don't let you in. So, yeah, you're right. That's when you're watching them on TV, just know that everybody's sitting there soiled in their own shit. Yeah just to get a good view of that ball drop. What's the worst place the three of you have ever been? The uh, porta potty at this gas station on the way home. It was like a fucking <laughs> horror scene. There's a special kind of evil that's just ingrained in some people's DNA that fucking compels yeah. them to take a shit in a porta potty. Have you no honor at all to shit in a porta potty? In public in general. I, I don't mind people shitting in porta potties. What I mind is they shit on like the seats and the little back seat behind it. 
No, like shitting, on, shitting in a porta potty has to be the most disrespectful thing a human being can do. I'd rather someone spit in my fucking face than take a shit in a porta potty that I'm about to use. I mean, because it's not going anywhere. You're basically just taking a shit on the floor in an area that I'm going to trap myself into piss. Like, just hold it, wait for like an actual toilet to flush it. You fucking monster. What if you're? I don't even know. Like, I, I, I don't think I could get myself to shit in a porta potty. Exactly. The, just the thought of it is so disgusting. That's I've, right. It's I've fucking it. gross. Sometimes you have to do it. Sometimes you can't hold the nope. shit. I, I'm 45 years old, and I've never had to shit in a porta potty. I've never found myself in a situation where I was okay with pooping in a box. Well, neither have I. I can't imagine. I don't think anyone. Or, well, I can't say anyone, but I find it very unlikely that a lot of people have to shit so badly that they do it in a porta potty, especially yeah. in a porta potty next to a gas station, which is walking distance from a gas station across the street. I'd, I would rather just pull my car aside on the road and just take a shit on the side of the road in the bushes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just you in have nature. To have an unbelievably high level of shamelessness to take a shit in a porta potty. See, that's how I feel about public toilets in general. I just, I get in there, I, I look like a ballet dancer trying not to touch any of the walls or the toilet stalls or anything, and just, <laughs> I get in, I unzip, I piss, I, I push the flush thing handle with my foot, and I Same. prance out of there, I wash my hands, and I get the hell out of there, trying to, again, on my way out, not to touch the door. It's so yeah, disgusting. Do the same People thing. Are so you ever worried ruthless. that while you're one footedly hitting the handle, you're just going to slip and slam your head and fucking bleed out on the dirty bathroom public floor? Oh, you, you just reminded me of something That's that made me real mad. There. <laughs> something that made me super fucking mad in New York. I had to shit so badly, and there, there was like a three hour drive from New York back to my uh, girlfriend's parents' place, so I was going to shit in a public toilet. Never a porta potty, though. And. I went into one, some fucking Marriott hotel thing, like the only toilet for miles in the city that wasn't occupied and destroyed. And I went in and there's piss all over the toilet seat, which is the worst thing in the world when you have to take a shit. So I grabbed the toilet paper and I wipe it down like the fucking custodian. And then when I finish wiping it down, I realize I used the last of the toilet paper to wipe the fucking seat off. <laughs> so I sat down so disappointedly, and then I, I immediately start opening my sphincter, and I'm about to have this euphoria of shit blast. And then I notice there's no toilet paper, so I have to abort mission. So I basically just clean that toilet for someone else. Made me so oh, fucking mad. Man, I was you, so you, mad. You reminded me of a good shit story. Did I tell the story where I almost shit my pants at Ikea? I can't say I've heard that one. Oh, I haven't man. heard that tale. How, how have I forgotten about this story? So uh, when my girlfriend moved here, we were looking for furniture at Ikea. So, you know, we were driving kind of early in the morning. So I'd got coffee. And I, I don't drink coffee that often because normally it makes me poop or kind of upsets my tummy, but never to a bad degree. Some kind of mythical fucking concoction I got from Dunkin' Donuts just destroyed my stomach to the point where by the time we got to Ikea, I was literally sprinting into the store to find the bathroom because I was going to shit my pants. And uh, as soon as we get to Ikea, I sit in the stall and I take a shit and I'm done. And it's immensely satisfying and it takes forever because it's a massive fucking disgusting shit. And then I look and there's no toilet paper. And I think, OK, what do I do? So first I take a photo of it and I text my girlfriend and then I take a photo of the emergency assist button that they have in the <laughs> Ikea bathrooms. And I ask her, would this be too much? Could I hit this for toilet paper? And she said, no, don't do that. That's for like if you're elderly or you fall or you're handicapped or no, something. Fuck that hit the fucking dial the Powerpuff Girls, man. That is an emergency. That's when you use those secret agent custodians. So what ended up happening? What ended up happening is um, I I stood up and I, I clenched as hard as I could to, like, contain any shit particles still left on my ass. Thankfully, it was a pretty clean poop. But uh, and then I put my pants on and I peeked out the bathroom stall. And the, when I waited until traffic died down and it was just two dudes washing their hands and like fucking splinter cell, I whipped into the stall next to me and closed the door and just got to sit in there and wipe my ass. But it was a uh, it was a nice little fucking tactical maneuver just to have a shitty ass and have to like stealth my way into the next stall and hope no one saw me. I'd never feel clean again if I had to do that. Yeah, no, I was ready no to way. burn the underwear, but thankfully somehow everything looked clean. I inspected like real carefully. There was nothing. Well, you should still wash it. <laughs> 
Oh, of course. Of course. oh no, when we got home, I, I fucking like changed my entire outfit, I think. Still but. wearing that pair of underwear to this day. My favorite pair. <laughs> hey, they're lucky. So I don't remember how old I was when this happened. I, I know I was old enough not to shit myself, but I'd, so I'd, I'd put it at probably roughly 18 or 19 years old. Me and a, a buddy of mine were walking. We were walking through a field to a, an unoccupied rental house that his parents owned. Uh, we were going to go dig through the garage for something. So anyway, we were walking through the field and I went to fart. And when I fart, I shit, <laughs> but I, I wasn't, I wasn't entirely sure if I shit. So the only way that I knew to check at the time, cause I was, I, I was like 30% sure that I shit. So I reached my hand back in the, between my underwear and my ass crack and pulled out this big glob of shit. <laughs> that is the most disgusting way to confirm. I would have rather bent over in front of my friend and had him look for me. That is abhorrent. <laughs> Fuck. So, so I, I'm sitting there in the middle of this field, probably a half a mile away from, from the house that we were going to. And I'm sitting there just holding this shit in my hand and I start flinging it, you know, like uh, uh, trying to fling it off, rubbing my hands in the grass and everything. And so I, I end up, doing the, the shitty walk for the other half a mile to get to the house. And we get there and I go to clean up and the water to the house is shut off. Oh. <laughs> so, so I go down in the basement and I strip down and I was wearing uh, uh tidy whities, you know, a uh, fruit of the looms. Mm -hmm. And I, and I take them and I, I clean as much as myself and my asshole as I can with them underwear. And I didn't know what to do with the shitty underwear. So you know, over in the corner, there was this chest freezer that was, you know, there was no power to it. So, so I take the shitty underwear and I throw it in the chest freezer, put my, my pants back on and then go over to a neighbor's house and wash my hands. So Wait, fa did you, fast. What did you tell the neighbors though? That's not like an easy sell. Like I put my pants, uh, just, I use your sink. No, it was, it was a friend, a friend of his family. Oh, I just gotcha. went in to use the bathroom. Uh, so fast forward like 10 years, uh, that buddy of mine, Jeff, so him and his dad were, the house had been rented by his uncle for, for that last decade. Uh, and he had, he had died. So they were in there cleaning it out, getting it ready for the next renter. So his dad is down in the basement and he's looking around and he opens up that chest freezer and he looks at my buddy and he, he looks down and them shitty underwear are still in there. <laughs> and he right. looks down and he, and he goes, your uncle was one crazy son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, he asshole. opened the forbidden sarcophagus. What a shame. Wouldn't that shit rot and like gain life after so many oh. years? Unless they turn the freezer on, they like froze it like a popsicle. I, I imagine if it was like totally no powered for that long, it'd be completely rotten, Ugh. molding maggots. Ugh. Well, he, uh, my friend was down there, and he said he, you could very clearly see that it was shitty underwear. So <laughs> ah, beautifully <laughs> preserved. What a fossil! <laughs> <laughs> you should have been like, "Can I have that back now?" <laughs> I've been looking, looking for those. For those. You're your fucking uncle stole them from me, took a shit in them, and threw them in a box. <laughs> oh, gosh, what was my uncle doing with teenage boy-sized undies? Hmm. <laughs> shit covered. <laughs> uh, that's weird, man. You reminded me, Doug, you were going to tell me, a while back you told me, since you mentioned your friends, a story about how you and him went to Las Vegas with all the money you had, you were going to run away from home or some shit. Wasn't that a thing? Uh, no, no. So back when I was uh, a raging alcoholic, me and a buddy of mine had kind of given up on, on life. And we had decided that we were going to go out leaving Las Vegas style. We were going to go hitchhike to L or to Vegas with as much money as we could get. And then just see how long we would survive, either drink ourselves to death or drugs or whatever the fuck it was going to be that was going to take us out. Um, so we uh we said our goodbyes to all the people around the area that we were living and decided to have one last hurrah uh here locally before we took off across the country <laughs> and so of course we got drunk and we started calling everybody that we could to bring over money and um there was this girl that I was seeing at the time and I asked her to to swing by and drop off whatever she could do to to help us out on our trek. 
And she ended up bringing over a 30 pack of beer and like a hundred bucks or something. <laughs> so I, I went in the other room and, and thanked her and then, uh, told her that we were getting ready to leave and you know she was crying and we kind of ushered out the door and then me and my buddy just drank as much of that beer as we could and then went to the bar uh spent the rest of that money and completely forgot about the trip to going to vegas it was just a <laughs> <laughs> what a scam that's like some ed ed and eddie shit for a jawbreaker nice hey, just had a nice night and you broke up with yeah. your girlfriend yeah that that was the same guy that was so we had uh, left the bar. This was probably, I'd say, within a month of that. Um, so he had lost his license for a DUI, and I had a. Uh, we we took my car to the bar, and we, fuck, I think we were there for I don't know, probably four hours or so, and decided that it was time to go home. I was too drunk to drive, so I let him drive my car. We were heading down the road about fifty-five miles an hour, and. He hit a parked car and it <laughs> popped. So all my life, I've always worn my seatbelt except for that night. So I popped out through the windshield. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> he, uh, How fast so was he, he was going? About, about 55. Holy shit. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even. Were you, were you still a large man at this point or were you a bit skinnier? <laughs> no, this is back when I was muscular. Okay. Uh, okay. Because I was imagining like a left for dead boomer like exploding through the window, <laughs> <laughs> like that that fat zombie in the bottom of the well on Walking Dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So so we hit the the car and it it knocked me out. I was uh, leaning there. So I I had went out and then he pulled me. I was kind of like half in half out. He pulled me back into the seat. And I had a fuck ton of cuts all over my head and my face and everything. And it gave the appearance that my face had been peeled off when <laughs> in, in actuality, it was just a, you know, the, the thin Jeez. blood and the, the head wounds was cost, uh, caused excessive bleeding. So I'm, I'm laying there slumped over in the, in the seat and he starts freaking out. He thought that I was dead. This is the first time <laughs> that night that he thought he killed me. So he first starts shaking time. me. It, it, yeah, this, this is uh, interesting. So he starts he shaking me. Minefield. And, uh, you know, I wake up and I asked him what happened. He said that he thinks we hit a car. I'm like, well, let's get the fuck out of here. And, he and he's trying to start the car. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The car just um, stopped all of a sudden. I don't know what the fuck happened. So I, I end up getting out and he's like, dude, you know, I don't have a license. The cops are going to be here. Can you tell them that you drove? I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Um, so I'm sitting, I, I switch places with him and I'm sitting in the, in the driver's seat, but I'm got my legs out, you know, out on the road and I'm just kind of sitting there trying to figure out what the fuck happened. And he goes over and sits in the passenger seat and then buckles himself in. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the cops end up rolling up and they ask me if I was driving. I say, yeah. So keep in mind that over in the passenger seat, the windshield is blown out completely. <laughs> and then in the driver's seat, there's no damage to the window, but the steering wheel is bent forward completely. And I'm just sitting there completely covered in fucking blood. Uh, so the cops start asking me, were you, were you driving? Were you driving? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I was driving. And I was sitting here looking at the concrete and I could watch this puddle of blood just keep getting bigger and bigger. And it didn't, it didn't dawn on me where, where it was coming from. I, I'm just, I was just fascinated. Keep in mind that I was really fucking drunk and I had a, a major concussion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> so um, the the smart detective uh, finally figures out that, you know, I think these guys are up to something. This is the one that was driving. And the guy uh, with his head shaved off is the one that went through the windshield. So they corner my friend and try to get the truth out of him. He starts telling his version of the, the story, which is, uh, we were driving down the road and this car pulled out in front of us and like, as if it was written in Hollywood, as he finishes that sentence up over the crest of the hill comes the lady who owned the car carrying a can of gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it becomes apparent that he's full of shit. Um, the cops start getting agitated with him. He starts yelling at the cops that he's not telling them a fucking thing. 
Um, <laughs> he takes off running. The cops after, tackle him. After he, he told him like an <laughs> hour's worth of stories. <laughs> he, he he ends up punching one of the cops, and um, of course, then he he's he gets arrested. They take him. It was it was the middle of winter, and we were in the Midwest, so it was cold. So they they put him in the holding cell, which is down in the garage. They strip him strip him naked and then put him in the holding cell right there in the elements. And uh, the cop walks up to him and says, hey, that friend of yours, he didn't make it. And just left him there all night thinking that he killed me. <laughs> that is fucked up. Wow. <laughs> That's a good prank, though. That's definitely like Kaya as an officer, no doubt. <laughs> what the hey, fuck? It'll teach him a lesson. Yeah, absolutely. I'll put the fear of God in him real quick. Holy fuck. It, his, so did they funny bring thing you is, to the it, hospital then? Like, what, were, what was yeah, that? Yeah, so, yeah, so I went to the hospital. I was... Uh, uh, they ended up calling my mom and, and my dad and, and then my mom reached out to a really good friend of mine and had him come too. So by this time I was maybe not starting to get sober, but I was definitely getting sore and getting, uh, familiar with what had happened to me. So I'm laying in the emergency room and I, I'm, I'm, I think it must be shock or whatever, but I start shaking uncontrollably. And of course I've got to pee cause I've been drinking heavily. Um, so th- they're bringing over, uh, little pee jars or whatever the fuck they're called. Bed pans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this was more like a half gallon milk container is what it looked like. One of them <laughs> yeah. big things. And I, I filled that fucking thing up, whatever the container was, I filled it up and it's just sitting there pouring out the top and the nurse is looking at me and I'm looking at the nurse and I'm still peeing. I'm like, I can't stop it. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. She's uh, getting turned on. I'm getting hard. Like I see you so, Hollywood. She takes a swipe like, for courage. And <laughs> Like I said, there was a, there was a lot of blood uh, around my head and face. Um, so they had wrapped a towel around it to try to stop some of the bleeding and everything. And it was bleeding through. So when, when my mom walked in, you know, they ushered her, ushered her in the back. And from, she told me later from her viewpoint, it looked like the top half of my head was gone. It was just blood red and and bandages and, and whatnot. And as she walked in, I was yelling at the the nurse because they had took my heating lamp. Cause I was, like I said, I was shivering and everything. Um, so my mom in the middle of, you know, I'm this big at the time, I considered myself somewhat of a badass and, I'm yelling and, and, you know, ready to fight some doctor for state stealing my shit. And she just comes around the corner and goes, Douglas Raymond. And I, I just instantly like turned into a four year old, you know, like what mom? (laughs) (laughs) Holy shit. Wow. So what happened to your friend? So his, his girlfriend, his girlfriend, uh, came and bailed him out the next day. And, I don't know if she had talked to the cop or come up with this on her own, but she also told him uh, that I died. She said, yeah, Doug Doug died. And then she, she brought him over to the hospital to see me. And he thought he was coming in to visit my family or something. I don't know what the fuck they're thinking, but yeah, it was from the time he got arrested to the time he seen me in the hospital. He thought that I was dead. That is fucked up. Wow. And awesome. And that man's yeah, name is Anthony. Yeah, that is a wild prank. I'm impressed. <laughs> that was it all planned, <laughs> like a bachelor yeah. party abduction. <laughs> oh, that is fucked up, man. All that to steal a heating lamp. Yeah, we uh, so so me and that guy that I have probably some of my best stories with him. His name was Jason. He uh, me and him used to. Neither one of us were working and we were both raging alcoholics. So we would just go start walking, looking for money. And this is like, what, 22 years old, you know, like we're just going to go look for money. Um, so we would end up either borrowing, mowing grass, whatever, to get enough money to go to the strip club. And then once we were in the strip club, I could pretend to be a bouncer or, uh, we could make friends with somebody. It was like a, a bring your own beer club. We could make friends with somebody who would offer us beer, whatever it was. So we were at this, this bar, this strip club, and we had been drinking malt liquor before we got there. Cause that would get us drunk faster. And then we're sitting in this, in this <laughs> titty bar 
And this guy comes over and, and he said, Hey, I got to go to the bathroom. Can you guys watch my beer? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you asshole. So he, he, he had a brand new 18 pack. He hadn't even cracked it yet. He gets up and goes to the bathroom. I pick up the 18 pack and we just get up and walk outside getting the, getting Jason's truck. And th- this is, I, I wish this is something that we could have had recorded or something, but when we got, we were going to back out of the parking spot, the front bumper of Jason's truck hooked on to the rear bumper of somebody's Jesus minivan. Christ. You're such a public so, nuisance. <laughs> you, you have no fucking clue, man. You're like There's, a fucking Mr. Bean of alcoholics. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like I said, as, as we were backing out, we snagged bumpers. So then we were, all we had to do is pull forward and get unhooked and back up. What, what Jason chose to do is just throw it in reverse and slam on the gas. So he's sitting there just, and we end up peeling our bumper off like half, uh, halfway across the truck. It's 90 degrees out. So it looks like a unicorn horn basically. <laughs> but we had drugged that guy's minivan out halfway into the parking lot. So as we're going through all this, the guy that comes running out, uh, he's like, that's my van. That's my van. Was the same guy who asked us to hold his beer. <laughs> <laughs> what a heist. <laughs> wow. I've never once said that I wasn't a piece of shit. I've made that very, very clear. What were the so, repercussions from this, though? I feel like that'd be kind of a, a big deal. Nothing. Wow. Nothing. We, we took off. <laughs> You got the 18 pack? Yeah, fuck. Yeah, yeah, we drank it on the way home. (laughs) Uh, So, wait, you weren't drinking and driving. You were drinking while driving. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Like I said, I was a piece of shit. (laughs) Holy fuck. Did you grow up in, like, a small town, though? Because I feel like there's no way this would, like, slide in a bigger city area. No, no. This was a, a pretty populated area. Really? There's probably like articles about you two, like the fucking degenerate bandits stealing beers and ripping minivans in half and shit. The, uh, so I used to work at, uh, the Holiday Inn and I was the guy who brought food room service. Mm -hmm. One of the, one of the benefits of working at Holiday Inn is that you could get a, a hotel room at any other Holiday Inn around the country for $15 a night. So... Every, about once a month or once every two months, me and a buddy of mine would would host a party at the Holiday Inn. Um, so long story short, the the last time that these parties were allowed happened to be at one of the uh, parties that I was hosting. So we we got the room, and if you remember, like the the flashback scenes in The Hangover, that's what this party was like. There were there were people there. I have no idea who the fuck they were. I know I was. Really, really fucked up. Um, people, so it was a, an adjoining room, but we weren't supposed to have access to the other the other room. By the time the party was over, uh, the bed in my room was broken, um, <laughs> the TV was broken, and almost everything was lifted out of that adjoining room. Like, it was almost <laughs> empty. So I, I can remember uh, we had some strippers show up, and they were not, not good strippers. Like they were like cigarette, cigarette burns on the butt. You know, they, they brought like a little, uh, a little jam box with a cassette tape and it played whatever fucking R Kelly or some shit. I don't know. But, uh, I remember there was knocking on the door. I go over and answer the door and it was the hotel security and he comes in and he's like, God damn. I mean, he ends up coming in and, and throwing some money for the stripper and all that shit. <laughs> um, no, you're definitely making that shit up right there. That's like a like, frat boy telling a story. Yeah. yeah. Throwing a party at my parents' house. My parents came in and then they got fucked up. Yeah. And then the cops time. came and they said, this party's too sexy. We're taking it down. And, and then they brought in. And everybody strippers. clapped. Yeah. yeah. No, no. I, 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 I telling you, I would not make it up. Um, so anyway, I <laughs> I remember I may have uh, received oral from the stripper, and I may have told her that I loved her and I wanted to make her my princess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you would not make that one up. That's terrible. That's, 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 that's a sad one to make up. <laughs> um, so 
the the next day, you know, we ended up just taking, trying to like set everything back up in some sort of order. Like we'd hadn't just completely destroyed the fucking room. Um, but I ended up getting a call from my boss when I got home and, and they called me in and they said, so starting now, uh, nobody at the holiday Inn is allowed to rent rooms from other holiday Inns for, you know, for that employee discount. It's just a regular thing. So I ruined that for everybody. Oh, and yeah. I also got fired and, uh, but I never had to pay any, I never had to pay anything for damages or anything. You're a danger to the public. <laughs> no idea. To the extent of all of this. Holy fuck. Would you, what would you consider your most horrible drunk story? Was it the one where you yelled at your dad? That was a sad one. That's not like a horrible one. That's just sad. <laughs> yeah. Well, it could be horrible to him. Oh, true. Yeah. No, no, it wouldn't be that one. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Ah, dude, I, I, I guess it depends on for what reason. Like the one thing that I regret the most is that what you're asking or yeah i guess i don't jesus you have like a whole Yu-Gi-Oh deck of drunk stories where you're the asshole first off what happened to jason was it your friend so you got your life together you you have a pretty decent job now you were a law-abiding citizen for the most part what happened to him did he get his life together uh last time i talked to him he uh i know he owns his own business he's in uh uh construction okay. doing very well all right Happy end. Do you, now, do you still drink or have you quit? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I haven't drank in quite a few, quite a number of years. Okay. That, the, the, the reason why is, like, if, if I was to stop and, all right, I'm just going to have one beer after work at a bar, I just won't stop. Mm-hmm. It, you know, I'll, I'll end up closing the bar. Even even today, I, I just don't have enough common sense to to limit or or uh, mm. have a few drinks with, with buddies. It's just... Okay, I'm going to drink until the beer's gone or until I black out, one of the two. Mm. So which is the one that you regret the most? So I was sitting here running through a bunch of them, and I don't know that it's one particular story. It's the attitude that I had when I was drinking. Um, you know, you know, you guys go to a bar, and there's always that one asshole who, who's obviously looking for a fight. Mm. That was me, you know. And the worst drunk, I, yeah. Wow. Yeah, the, the 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 just the worst type of person. Yeah. And as I've gotten older, I realized, you know, I was, I don't, I think I was dealing with some insecurities and uh, just overall unhappiness in my life. But it it led to just being a fucking prick, you know, mm-hmm. uh, walking into a bar and and having somebody bet me five dollars. You know, give me five dollars and you can pick anybody in here and I'll go up and punch them. That type of shit. Wow, what the so, fuck? Wow, what a fucking piece what of shit. What an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh wow. That's like short man syndrome though. Like picking the tallest guy you can and like jumping up and giving him a little wallop. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's like the a most sober guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's pick on the sober nerds. It's like I said, you know, I, I know I was dealing with some sort of insecurities and, and overall unhappiness. That's what was leading it or, or mm. driving it anyway. Uh, so now I wouldn't do anything like that. But yeah, I, I fully admit that I was a complete piece of shit. I, I was a lot of fun to drink with if we were on the same tide, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, until you make me believe that you died while I'm in the drunk <laughs> tank freezing to death, you know. Or you crash my car, yeah. blame me for it or something. Yeah. Make me drive you to your I, I did place. that too. <laughs> <laughs> God, you asshole. That is beautiful. So speaking of insecurity, uh, before we have to wrap up in a little bit here, how was your experience ever since you came on our show? Because I know that was new to you to be reading that many YouTube comments about yourself. Um, So I was fully expecting to be shit on... Um, by a large portion of the population. And I was very, very pleased with the positivity that I read it. It, I guess it kind of validated maybe. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I had a good time with it and, and I was, uh, I was happy with the results. There was only a handful of people who want me to die. <laughs> <laughs> that's less than normal. Yeah. That's growth right there. That's yeah. progress, baby. Yeah. One of them was me. 
<laughs> Kaya on his old accounts. <laughs> Just trying to keep you humble. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I mean, I, I think I prepped you adequately for what to expect from YouTube, and so you didn't have any wild expectations. <laughs> yeah, you told me to stay the fuck away from the YouTube comments because it'll drive me back to suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. The best advice you can give someone, really. Yeah, he's got a point. Uh, I had a... So, yeah, the, I guess I can just tell the story because I think it's a really, really funny story. And it also goes to show how big of a piece of shit that I was. Um, and then it, it's a quick one, and then we can get off here. Mm -hmm. So there were, this was uh, about that same time that all that other shit was happening. I was very actively pursuing uh this girl i really really wanted to put part of me inside part of her oh boy and um it, it was probably rape, a is it? yeah put, put your <laughs> yeah, alcoholism inside of her normal functioning life i have this hilarious story about when i was a rapist guys <laughs> check this one out so did you want me to save it then no <laughs> <laughs> all right Depending um on the statute of so, limitations <laughs> so so it was it was it's about a, great a story uh, you can tell in three more months <laughs> <laughs> um it was about it was about a month and a half to two months of of solidly pursuing her we we partied every weekend together uh so there was a lot of interaction and so we we ended up going down to my buddy's basement there was a bed down there <laughs> jesus and <laughs> and i'm telling you man i was i was so fucking turned on i was like i had been dreaming about this moment for months. So I got her pants off, got my pants off. Um, I take the rubber and I put it on. I, I grab the bottom of her underside her knees and hold her legs up, press the head of head of me into her. And just as I start pushing into her, I come. <laughs> 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 so hold, hold on. Oh boy. So so I'm sitting there looking her in the eyes and I don't make a fucking sound. I don't blink. I just sit there and I come into the rubber without moving or letting on at all. And I look at her in the eyes and I say, "We really shouldn't do this. We need to wait longer. I don't want to lose I don't want to jeopardize our friendship." <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh, oh. You went full loser beta boy <laughs> oh, oh man well so, to, get, to um, give you credit though what is the out to that situation i feel like you're just fucked just fuck with a loaded yeah. condom i don't know what to tell you yeah. i want to make you my princess <laughs> <laughs> oh my god there's cum already in this condom what did you give me <laughs> <laughs> are you trying to get me pregnant <laughs> some sick bastard came into the basement and came into my condom yeah so so she ended up telling her friends that i was a, a gentleman and oh. and uh we ended up i ended up making amends but she was never any the wiser okay hmm. well that works out well lucky it doesn't make um, you look like a piece of shit just a loser <laughs> it's just sad. <laughs> All right, I, I take it back then. I, I don't know what. To... <laughs> <laughs> no, I was legitimately expecting like some creepy scenario here, like you're wanting to leave and you're just blocking the staircase. <laughs> <laughs> There's one way out of this basement. <laughs> Let me introduce you to my son. <laughs> <laughs> So that actually that just made you seem like a real gentleman, not. Yeah. And then you didn't even get friend zoned from it, so that worked out real well. Oh fuck. I certainly wouldn't have had the the strength to say that. Oh no, I don't know what I would have done. I think I would have just kept yeah. faking it, just fucking uh, her with that limp dick. What, <laughs> just what, mashing yeah, against her. Yeah. That scenario to look not bad. I don't think there's a single thing you could do. Yeah. I, I guess maybe just... Doug did figure it out, but even then. That's that's right. a risky move because a lot of women might just be like, oh yeah, he totally came. <laughs> Man. I, honestly, though, I'd probably do it. Kaya said, I just like wet noodle her until enough was enough. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Or like maybe pull out and go, hang on, wait, I want to get you ready first, and like eat her out for a while until you can get yourself hard again. I don't know. Rip off the condom and throw it in her face and finger or something. No, like yeah, like stealthily take it off. Yeah. No idea. Maybe just. 
just get mad at her like uh, look what you look what you made me do what's wrong with you why are you so hot <laughs> what, Fuck is, you. what is this <laughs> well, like a dog what did you do no <laughs> No, <laughs> <laughs> rubber face in it. <laughs> uh, awesome. Uh, yeah, that's nice, man. All right. Um, do we have anything else? <clears throat> Not unless you celebrated Christmas, Kai. Nope. Jackson, Mine was just if you're about out there, the same as Doug's. Mm. Jackson, if you're out there, come home soon. We miss you. We miss you, Jackson. This was for you, buddy. Yeah. Jackson, you can stay gone as long as you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. who's going to do the outro? Oh, yeah, Doug that's going to be rough. Go yeah, over, Doug, yeah, Doug, plug your shit. Doug can hit it. Yeah, go over to uh, whosrightpodcast.com. I'd appreciate it. Give us a listen. Uh, there's a lot of stories, and and I don't know. Kai, you tell them what the fuck our You listen to our show. I do, yeah, that's true. And I mean, if you enjoyed the last hour of dr uh, Doug's drunk stories, then there are many, many more on the Who's Right podcast at Who's Right Podcast dot com. Kai, I think you're coming on here in a couple weeks, right? Yeah, on the what fifteenth when I'm back in Germany, back yep. in in a nice, happy country with Brady, our uh, who uh, official podcast moderator. Oh, nice. Fun. Do you think he's still going to come on? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so to clue you guys in, all the chat logs I pretended I was reading from Jackson, those were from Brady. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, man, Doug and I are assholes. All right, let's wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> well, take us out, Doug. Give us a, an official yeah. outro in Jackson style. Go to patreon.com official podcast. The official and podcast, then yes. Thank you. The official podcast. Um, See. Thank you all for listening. Yep. Talk to you later. There it is, baby. Thanks, yep. everyone. It's pretty good. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.